exciting. That's actually a really, really exciting Brewmaster game. I am surprised, though, they don't run the Tiny oh. Carry or the CK Carry and the Anti-Mage mid. Because okay. the Anti-Mage is really good lane. So I think, unfortunately, oh. I've... Yeah, have I juked us? I'm not then sure. I think I actually Monkey not. is going to be playing support. <laughs> uh, thank you, Realm. He says, good luck, have fun casters. Much appreciated. <laughs> I, I, wonder, I wonder who he's referring to. <laughs> if it's us or the other casters. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Turtle... Like the Portuguese ones, So obviously. what had confused me was that Turtle, when he was playing uh, in the open qualifiers, was a support player. And given that Forsaken Oracle, the position 5 player for Arkash, was mm -hmm. standing in, I had made the assumption that when Turtle locked in the hero, this was to be uh, support Storm Spirits. Uh, I, however, oh. looking at his Dota buff, he is actually primarily a mid laner. Um, so I, I wasn't oh. sure where he was going to end up going with this, but it is actually going to end up being a mid lane Storm uh, and a position 5 battle. Brew. I am slightly oh. less intrigued. Uh, but who knows? Maybe as a well, <laughs> as a caster, I am actually so ashamed I got duped by Slacks talking in Twitch chat. <laughs> that was partially the reason why I believed that us. he said it in Twitch chat. He lied. I well. clip it and ship it, boys. And Abo, for once, I'm here to do the losers interview with you. How does it feel? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Richie. I finally know what it feels like. Uh, I think it's time for me to cry. Monkey is going to fight for this rune down bottom. I think that Bro Monkey has, has swap positions, right? He's no longer the mid player. He's just a Brewmaster player, which I think suits him much better. Uh, and I'm really excited for this. Actually, Pro Position 5 Brew is, is really fun to watch as well. It's just that usually they combine this hero with literally any sort of magical yep. damage. And lo and behold, PA has none of that. So Monkey has a really hard lane ahead of him. Yeah, you have no partners to ignite easily, which means getting kills in lane is, is not going to come too naturally. Uh, oh. Taking a look at how the mid lane matchup will then boil down because it's also a position five Salacious Sea Lion support uh, for the anti mage. This this hero does basically nothing uh, to stop a slaughter, as we can see. Yep. So I guess both off lanes are just going to be one for both teams. I would say like, they have both really strong off lanes, and these safe lanes are kind of weak. I like that they at least ran the TP five, like I talked about. I think that's really clever by KBU. You know, the serious part of casting when we talk about them, uh, but. I don't think it's going to be enough to stop the IO slaughter combo. It's it's enough to mitigate their impact, but I still think this lane should go IO slaughter favored. Meanwhile, bottom, I don't know how this PA is going to lane, honestly. I think uh, Monkey's doing his best job of just keeping the warden away, and that at least stops the kill potential from KBU. And ideally, you just trade blows here, but no actual kills happen. Yeah, uh, of course, this uh, CK hero, he's got such an incredible base damage. Uh, Pale Horse feels like oh. he's basically got to use the dagger to secure CS, which gives even more stick charge to CK, which means he can throw more stuns, get even more damage. Um, again, Monkey doing his best, but he's going to be extremely limited in what he can actually do. Because, again, he has no Ignite partner for the Cinder Brew. Nice little rhymes. Yep. I actually do like that point, by the way. That's a really good point. Uh, usually, heroes that are good against these, like, spamming, you know, magic stick lanes, let's call them, right? Spamming a lot of spells are those that have, uh, like, a lot of kill potential. Because, as you said, they get to spam the spells ever so slightly more, but they always get a kill. So it's not like you get a bunch of magic stick charges from them, and then the cycle continues, right? It's more like they kill you, all of a sudden you come back to lane, and if you want to use spells, you're giving them more mana to kill you again, which CK can take advantage of. So very nice point, actually. Certainly can. The Warden did a weird move. He pulled the aggro under tower. I'm not sure if that was done on purpose. To try and just get something oh. going. Up lane? Oh, sorry. Okay. I spoke too soon. Fashion set to wait for C-Line. At least here, uh, his Spirit Siphon is pretty good at tanking through Gremlo. Uh, but of course, Gremlo has a Wisp to assist him with the tanking. And uh, Salacious Sea Lion will eventually be limited by his mana and most of the charges of Scythe that he has available. Uh, but he's doing, again, he's doing a pretty decent job. Uh, Realm is getting in a couple of creeps. Of course, not really able to, to contest the slaughter as much as he'd be hoping to, but that's AM versus slaughter for you. Yeah, honestly, this lane is going to be... I mean, the fact that AM is actually keeping on par with a PA who should theoretically have a little bit better lane is, is impressive in itself, right? That's what Realm is uh, doing pretty well here. I Annihilate, meanwhile, in the mid lane, this mid lane is super evenly matched. Uh, I Annihilate does not have too much of an advantage over the Storm in the early game. But later on, the burst of a mid lane Tiny is pretty strong against a Storm before he gets his big items and starts to tank up a bit more. Bottom? No. Monkey's just keeping the Grimstroke at bay, doing what he can without any help from his carry whatsoever. Oh, look, he's even giving in tangos. Yeah, it's, a, it's a hard lane here for for the Phantom Assassin. I think she's just looking Top. to get as much CS as possible and then go to the jungle. Salacious Sea Lion is going to be bashed to death, and the first kill goes to Crow uh, as he takes it away from Gremlo. Well, that's going to be fine because his can do more with that farm, apparently. We'll see what they build into. 
Gremlo really happy about this. All he has to do is literally A click the ground. Yeah. He's Gremlo gonna be a little bit upset not to get that first blood bonus. There is probably Diet Pepsi all over, uh, being splashed and thrashed about. Uh, so Crow does have to be a little bit careful here. <clears throat> that reminds me of this other streamer called Jenkins. It's really interesting. Uh, they share a lot of things, right? Except that they, they never shared a room is the one interesting thing. <laughs> So that's that's the only thing I know about Gremlin and Jenkins. They refuse to ever be in the same space together. I hear that if they do, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. The world implodes. The world simply no, no, they implodes. share the same Fight face. Rel, one. Rel. Ooh. Ooh, that was very close for Rel. He was really playing that to the bitter end, acknowledging that DP was probably going to save him there or try to get the kill again. So starter in the process, but good good usage there of the of Crow stick. Ah, Grumlo very tanky, right? Going for a double bracer into phase boots. So eventually, so once he gets this armor online, I mean, he is just simply not going to care for these uh, roaming right clicks that KBU have to, uh, to throw at him. But yeah, the, the level two spirit siphon, at least, uh, so you should see Lion having a little bit more impact than I than I really thought he would. Uh, despite, of course, dying for first death, it's at least more space for AM. Twenty-one and two now for him. Yeah. Yeah, he's actually beating Pale Horse as well. Like, that's really impressive. That's all Salacious Sea Line, by the way. Not like these carries have any control over their fate. It's really the supports doing this. Monkey in the top lane. Oh, sorry, in the bottom lane. He's in trouble. He does have that Thunderclap and ignites Chaos Knight at the very end of that Cinder Brew. Turtles level 6 in the middle lane. Don't think he can quite get through the tanky tiny, however. Top. Gremlo's going for another one. Salacious Sea Line is the target. He has flash flashes of plenty, and he has a support to kill. Gremlo only has one vision, and that is of Salacious Sea Line dying in front of him. Okay. And uh, that vision will come true. Uh, so it's a pretty easy kill. Even with that Oracle, huh? I can do these yeah, things. Yeah, and, and again, even without uh, out, out of mana, Gremlo simply does not care that AM is auto-attacking him. He, he has eyes only for the, the DP, as you stated, and there's just nothing Realm can do. At least Realm, full HP, full mana. You know, he's not really taking too much damage. They haven't gotten close to killing him, uh, and he's not being terribly out-denied either. In fact, Gremlo, he, he hates... Okay, now he's gotten his second deny of the entire lane, uh, but if you look over towards his uh, contemporary Sunlight and the Mark Tours down bottom, he's actually got 13 denies. Uh, so he's doing a lot better than uh, perhaps we hope he's gone. Now they have a free kill to the Pale Horse. Oh, well, Pale Horse <laughs> has enough HP. The Magic Wand saves him. A Monkey is here to serve as a bit of a tank. Monkey, unfortunately, only level 2, not even level 3 yet, which makes him unable to really fight against these two. He needs to sap some experience from somewhere. And the PA has kind of taken it all away from him. Sunlight continuing to attack Pale Horse. But the under the tower is not going to be an easy kill. In fact, Monkey sees the opportunity. Goes for MR Taurus. Oh no, Stifling Dagger does not trigger that Cinder Brew. Monkey will have to do it himself. And as a result, Monkey will die because he's just level 3 Brew. Yeah, not much you can do about that one. Even with the infused raindrops, it's just a little bit too much damage uh, coming through there. Huzzah! Checking in with Turtle in the middle lane. He's gone for the dual null tally uh, builds as Tiny has power treads on the way, I believe. Straight into Blink Dagger, so the typical mid lane build uh, for Tiny. There a mm -hmm. stack in progress. There is the first stack being made now by Crow, as he has also stacked Ancients only once. And I don't see any stacks in the jungle for KBU for the Tiny. He's just limited to farming whatever camps and perhaps moving maybe bot lane. There's a lot of kill potential versus PA, I would say, uh, to, to look to increase his farm. That is true. I think I think uh, if you see opportunity and Pale Horse puts himself out of position, Tiny should rotate. But without the Blink Dagger, you're probably better off just honestly farming the mid lane, unless it's a very clear opportunity. Because you just need that Blink Dagger. That timing is going to destroy PA regardless, because you'll get it before she gets Battle Fury anyway, and you'll get it before Storm gets any big item. So I don't think I and Eilid should concentrate too much on trying to save the other lanes. Unless he wants to go top because he thinks Realm is having a tough time. But I actually think Realm is holding a, his own in a decent way. Well, now there is oh, the Courier. Uh, the courier. That's uh, boots down on the DP. That is very painful. Uh, Gremlo also up to level 6 now has the Corrosive Haze. So lots of damage to be amped here for himself mostly. And has a little bit more kill threat. Plus, of course, uh, the Lingering Vision is incredibly annoying to play against. Mm. Dyer's middle tower is under yeah, we have Vanguard, by the way, on Realm, which is very interesting. So, kind of a mid lane in build. Oh, that yeah, is yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, is that going to be enough to save him from Gremlo? I yeah. mean, honestly, sh like, not. You, ca you can't, like, fight him head on, right? But I don't think he's vulnerable any longer. I actually think he can hold his own this lane, though. I, that Vanguard pickup is interesting. I would be surprised. Bash of the Deep with Overcharge now being level 2, soon to be level 3 here, perhaps at level 6. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, 
I'm not opposed to this, but I, I, I'm not exactly sure what it's for. It's just kind of his most difficult laning matchup. I, I could see this if he was laning versus someone, oh, I don't know, like a softer counter that normally does kind of bully you with the right clicks. Um, but I think Slaughter's just a little bit too much. Oh, here comes Turtle. And Turtle wants to kill the Warden first, concentrating on stunning the CK though to save Pale Horse life. I Nightly comes from up high and up high. He will stun Pale Horse at one chin. There's the toss as well. The Monkey saving Pale Horse's life by allowing him to Phantom Strike away. Monkey is not going to be tanking all this damage. And with the help of Crow, they actually have an opportunity to go for Sunlight. Sunlight in trouble. He has been slowed by the Tether. Crow turns this into a double kill. And Arkosh actually. Turn this around. Really good rotation by Turtle. Stupendous. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Crow as well, I believe, TP to the outpost. And he makes a yes, pretty big difference there uh, to be able to refill the mana of Turtle. Uh, he's actually got himself a Soul Ring on the Wisp. I'm over here. Uh, so lots of burst mm -hmm. mana here to give to Turtle. As they burn through a little bit more HP of Annihilate. Realm's going to show up for a mana void, but basically full mana was Turtle. And he's going to make the points by zipping away, in fact. A little bit of a hopeful rotation from Dyer's Realm. Bottom tower is under attack. Uh, there. I mean, you kind of have to play this way, I think, if you go Vanguard anti because you're not really meant to farm, right? And this is the difficulty you have when you play that from the carry position. I think if you're mid, this is much easier to play around, but from the carry position, you're right. It's gonna He's gonna struggle. And this is an opportunity for Pale Horse to actually catch up and get his own Battle Fury or whatever build he decides to go for to farm and be able to outfarm the AM. Right now, yeah, he's actually 100 gold above the AM, which is a win for Pale Horse. And his item is going to be a Ring of Health first, so it does seem like it's going to be a Battle Fury. Okay. So the more traditional build then for the Phantom Assassin, unless he also decides to turn this into a Vanguard. Uh, I mean, you, Please no. you can Please disassemble no. Vanguard, right, we should say. So maybe Realm still True. decides to go back into the Perseverance uh, and, and get that full uh, Battle Fury. But it seems not to be bottom. the case. He, he's uh, queued up the Manta. Monkey is going to die bottom. Monkey has figured out that the best thing he can do this game is honestly die and delay the game. At least until he hits at level 6. Uh, once he hits at level 6 though, he'll have a pretty strong peak and they can probably abuse that a little bit more. As KBU wants to take this advantage to push down bottom tower. They almost have Exorcism just once the Tome comes off cooldown. There we go, use the Tome. And X has been used. They also fortify for the mid wave where Storm and no. Crow were doing a little bit more damage. I know that also pulling the wave to farm minutes. Top is taking a bit of damage. Grevlo and Pale Horse pushing the five minute wagon. KBU not really in a position to defend the towers. Arkosh not in a position to defend bottom. Uh, but KBU is going to be probably Dyer's making the first move from here, given that Tiny now up to level 9 has his Blink Dagger freshly delivered. Nice. That is going to be the start of KBU's game, I think. When they can play with a uh, Annihilate Blink Dagger, they just go with the CK. Whatever he has doesn't really matter. He just needs to offer an extra stun, and pretty much anyone in Arkosh can die here. Maybe the starter Radiant survives, Radiant especially Radiant if Io's nearby, but uh, they burst anyone else. And immediately they go for the smoke. The Warden joins him, so you can have the Ink Swell. But... Arkosh, they know that this is happening, and so they actually... Never mind, they don't know anything, they just go to the lane of farm. <laughs> and now they're gonna get gone on. And there's two heroes on top of each other, which means it's gonna be an easy gank. Even utilizing that Soulbind really effectively. Yeah, the little double toss. Uh, toss has got some very weird interactions, as you probably know if you've tried to oh link in someone. And uh, I guess with Soulbind, you duplicate the toss. That's pretty cool. Thou, what? It seemed to have... There was definitely a double toss that, like, echoed in the trouble mid. Oh, I know, monkey. I know. That was gonna be the brew. I thought that was like he tossed one into the other, and the other person tossed. I thought it was like a jungle. Well, he doesn't. I mean, it must have been with Soulbind, right? Because he only has the one toss charge. Yeah, no, no, no I know with Soulbind for sure. Yeah, yeah. I just think that it wasn't the same person twice, right? Or, uh, I'm not sure. I think it. I think it was the uh, the echo. Uh, so yeah, as you describe it. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Right, right, right. So okay. Realm is going battle tier. About by the way, he has changed it, uh, and he's basically committed here with the broadsword. Not really much else he has you to. could do with this. He has to, he has to. Like, I, I'm okay with Vanguard into Battle Fury, right? But it still delays it, no matter what. And we just got level 6 on Brewmaster, which means Primal Split is ready. Can they get a kill here? Is that all they're smoking on? Just Primal Split? Huzzah! Yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's huge, dude. I'll underestimate that spell. Brewmaster's the hardest hero in the game. Only silence. Oh, well. Can't use your spells if you're silent. Cyanide kills Monkey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Eye was also in trouble. Goodbye to Crow. <laughs> 
caster questions play, sometimes caster's right. Some <laughs> maybe, maybe it wasn't the right play, but also I'd argue that if you're gonna play around your spells, maybe don't walk into the silence, right? There's two sides to the same. That, that, that might be true. Uh, sunlight as well. He, I mean, like, you see what they're fighting with. There's believe. Exo, Blink on Tiny, there's uh, now Armlet for the yep. CK, so he's actually mighty strong, uh, even for pushing. So I was just a little bit surprised. I know it's going to be making great progress towards what seems to be the Echo Saber. Indeed it is. He's got the Oblivion Staff now being delivered. Uh, Tama went down incredibly fast. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I was surprised to see them smoke up and, and try and fight with the Brewmaster ulti. But it uh, didn't work out for them that time. Space for PA at least, who almost has their Battle Fury online. Looking at the bright side. I've... I think the smoke is okay, but maybe they overstated that power spike. Like, is it a good enough power spike to catch a straggler even maybe in the triangle? Sure. Is it good enough to dive the tier 1? Maybe not so. Right? But as a Brewmaster player, Dyer's that promo split gets you very excited, and obviously I'm assuming Monkey started laughing at that moment, and there's no planning or strategy you can do when the laughter drowns out <laughs> any sort of, you know, talking. Yeah, he's... So, maybe that's why. It, it's funny, he gets silenced, and he just gets louder in the comms, doesn't he? <laughs> they caught the storm, and that's going to be another really effective silence. Salacious Sea Lion on point with these silences. Only three seconds, but three seconds that have destroyed our Kosh game. And, oh, Monkey is in a similar position. That was only one second, but it didn't quite destroy him, which is why Monkey can get away alive. Yep, I and I like lacks the damage, so won't be able to quite get through him too quickly. Uh, with Echo Saber online, perhaps that's going to be a kill, however. Starting to look a little bit scary. KBU definitely can fight very well with these four heroes. Um, and they fight it very well, extremely well, even I would say, into Arkash's format lineup right now, uh, as we've clearly seen, right, Storm? I uh, haven't oh, no. taken two, oh, take two quick deaths yet. Pale Horse, no. Pale Horse has been found, and Pale Horse has been annihilated Thank by I Annihilate. You understood. Yep, farming, uh, and the warden. Farming pretty far. He does ping the ward. I, I reckon that was his ping. But, uh,. That is going to delay his Battle Fury a little bit more, which means that AM might is going to beat him to Battle Fury, despite going for a full Vanguard. Salacious Sea Lion in the bottom lane is going to be the kill they go for now, and actually use four heroes in the spot by GP. Honestly, considering the impact of Salacious Sea Lion, I understand the hate. Yeah, and that's Battle Fury finished now, in addition to the casual Vit Booster. Uh, this is the only awkward part about going for Vanguard first. I'm not really sure what you go for with this VIP booster. Um, it's pretty nice for the HP that it just gives you with uh, Strength Treads toggled on. He's sitting at about 1500 HP, which is very respectable uh, for an AM this early. And yeah, oh, the primal split. Okay. Now it's 60 minutes in. How powerful can this be? DD. We'll see. As yeah, Martorus, oh. or Sunlight, sorry, is going to be brought down. Turtle actually survives. He has a double damage to mention. Oh. And he backed the AM well. That's going to be Realm falling as well with. The uh, soul fight. Now annoying turtle. He's still silenced. He has to get away with a full lighting, but he's been leashed and he does manage oh. to barely get out by annihilate. Make sure to cut this escape short as Gremlo is concentrating on the support. He's going for the ward. He's gonna kill him. Crow though in trouble. I annihilate once the second support is gonna find it. Crow dies here. Monkey at least capable of making it out of here alive. Okay. ABU chasing after Monkey though. We have a Blink Dagger I Annihilate. He's definitely not going for Roche right now. Monkey knows this. He uses a Cinder Brute to go a bit faster using the Drunken Brawler. But unfortunately, he's not fast enough. Too much beer in his belly. Too much beer in his belly. Too many bubbles, and uh, he's not going to be able to get away. Uh, still a, a decent fight for Arkash, uh, especially because they do kill the AM as soon as Pale Horse has his uh, Battle Fury online. And he is starting to farm away uh, with this item now. We can see some progress towards whatever his next item is going to end up being. I'm not really sure what he wants to go for on the PA. Is it just going to be like straight up a BKB? Maybe a, a Dasso? I think you need it. The Pale Horse has not really been able to join a single engagement just yet, right? And I think he wants to carry the team, not be carried. So I think that BKB is necessary if he wants to start fighting with his team. They need his damage. Slaughter brings a fair amount of damage early and sort of storm with a DD. But I think without a DD, they don't take that fight as easily as it went, right? right. So... I do, I do think PA needs to get online. Desolator is not going to be enough for these fights. Gremlo has also managed to find pretty respectable farm out from the winning stage, especially yep. considering that they weren't really winning too many fights. Uh, but he did show off his brand new Blink Dagger in that last fight, and already has the Ogre Axe for his BKB uh, completed. KBU, though, looking to invade Triangle, and Gremlo, like a good support here, standing at the ready to break smokes. Oh, even a better Blink back. And in fact, they're not even going to be able to steal any of the Ancients. So Arkosh with a perfect read of the situation. Might not have known about the ward here, but uh, they sure acted like they did. That was amazing for them. Okay. 
Good reach for them, just preserving their time. Mind you, KBU still winning by 4k with an AM in their team, so it's scary, but at least the core to core matchup does benefit Arkosh right now. As they do find a CK so here, tanky. but they realize a little bit too tanky, yep. Well, already has Blink Dagger and the armlet, but oh, Monkey, as his name indicates, plays in the trees. Well, he's been found once he leaves the trees. He's sent back. Grow comes with him. I don't think that was the play, Grow. They silence the storm again. He can't get out. Turtle barely killing that ghost. And yet nearby, oh. he gets killed by the monovoid as Pale Horse walks in to die. Truly changing Arkosh to a suicide cult. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked that Pale Horse decides that's the fight he needs to join. Uh, again, just with Battle Fury in the Mithril Hammer, he is going straight into BKB. But, but KBU are playing on this double blink timing on their, on their two main cores right now, right? Uh, AM as well was able to get involved, not so much because of this you know, casual bit booster, but mostly because he just is a really hard counter. Turtle, uh, Turtle, you know, was almost full mana, and he still ends up getting popped by this last little mana void at 400 damage with only, I don't know, five, 400 mana missing. It's, it's very punishing. Monkey is going to actually activate the ulti. He's looking to get involved, but he's actually he just going <laughs> to... He's gonna die. And there's still a ward here in the triangle, so they could look for Crow. Yeah. The cherry on top is Richie. He bought back for that. <laughs> he did. That, that was the play he bought back for. I gotta say, though, uh, kudos to Monkey because he triggered the Cinder Brew on everyone with a fire that healing, which is hard to do, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. That was a lot. From that 300 damage he died for, but on everyone. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I hate to cut to a replay of this, speaking, but I just. I don't know what he was. Yeah, please do. And here it is. Can you? Can you? Yeah, we... yeah, here it is. The four man Cinder Pearl looks real good, and then he just dies. All right, but, but let's do some math here, Richie, yeah. right? Cinder Pearl deals what? Uh, it deals 300 per hero, right? 300 per hero, right? And Monkey only has 1300 HP. Oh, wait. I'll do the math right afterwards because they're killing Storm as well, but he's at all lightning this time. The science is not available. Bro, so much we'll be able to relocate it, but Gremlo, Gremlo, dude, that's that's not your base, and he's not Monkey he's either. Too. So he's not really good in the trees. He's just a fish. He's a fish out of water, literally, but this fish can jump! He's a flying fish, Fire Richie! Remlo's out! Is under attack. Of all the things. No, what is it called? Mudskippers. He's a mudskipper. Mud that's skipper. what he is. Absolutely. He's a... Yep. He, he... Check. Go Google that. That's a real That's a real fish. I've, they're here in Malaysia. They exist. Oh, really? Mudfishes? Hey, Mudskippers. Mud that's mud what they're skippers. called. They're cool. Very cool. Anyway, so yeah, if you calculate it, right, Gremlo or, or uh, the Brewmaster has 1300 HP, right? But if he triggered Cinderbro on everyone, that's 1500 damage he did. So technically, he dealt more damage than the enemy team, right? So if you think about it that way, that was actually a really good play. It was, yeah, it was. They also give uh, Aegis, by the way, to Sunlight, quite interestingly here. He's still holding on to this. Uh, Realm still actively playing around his team as he farms aggressively with the rest of his boys smoked around him. He may live to jump Turtle. Seems like Crow instead is going to be left behind. Uh, but Sunlight does find Turtle. Stun is going to whiff, however, and Crow oh. does. Gets some assist and is going to be allowed to live here as he does tether back to Monkey. Sunlight chasing for more. Gremlo's going to blink and stun into him. Gremlo is going to be able to actually make it away as well. Quite zippy with that. Oh, and Pale Horse makes the decision to actually go Desso instead of BKB. He is just going to farm endlessly this game. He watched that one Arteezy game and he thought that's the play style I want to make. And uh, he is. this is going to delay obviously when they can fight, but at least it will give him a really strong fighting chance in the late game because the Desolator will allow him to catch up with the AM. So a different proposition, but not a wrong one with Pale Horse. And he is catching up, right? Utilizing the space Arkosh is making by committing suicide very well. If just he doesn't do it, I think this actually isn't that bad a plan. And I, Arkosh, not my preference. They're setting up for a pretty promising fight in this mid lane. Uh, they've got a ward down already. There's still two minutes left of this Aegis. The monkey, having gotten in pretty deep, is prepared to at least pop the ulti here and make a bit of a difference. The issue is coming from tier two down bottom. Uh, KBU are yep. not going to pass underneath that ward, Dyer's instead they're going to cut the mid wave, which means that Arkosh don't really have great positioning for this fight. Uh, so the smoke is not going to pan out for them. KBU have now completely established Dyer's themselves in like the tower. honestly the bottom half of the map. That ward in the triangle is really imp important for KBU's success because now they can obviously take the mid tower much easier, but they also can get to dominate Radiant's the enemy jungle and their triangle, forcing attack. Pale Horse into a difficult position. If they now initiate this I Annihilate, he's going to be helped immediately by his team. They just lost the ward nearby though, but I think Gremlin's probably dead here. The Soul Blind Stop Storm has been leashed. They gotta kill him during the leash, wow. and when the Mono Boy stays successful, it's so easy for KBU to clean up these demons. Gremlin does buy back. But for to what? <laughs> Why? Monkey? He's gonna at least annoy them a little bit. One last Cyclone. Gremlo can at least cut the lane and push this out. But KPU is dominating 75% of the map right now. So it's really difficult for Farkosh, Arkosh to find anything. Yeah, and that one was just over so fast, wasn't it? It was just one yep. big mana void. Even uh, it, it ends up deleting Pale Horse. 
Uh, so much he could have done there. He tries to farm in his own jungle uh, and is immediately punished for that one. KVU in the meantime heads straight up to high ground. Sunlight still has Aegis for about 50 more seconds. And with Phantasm here, in addition to the minus armor queen by the dragon scale, he's actually, uh, uh, oh sorry, does not get minus armor. What, dragon scale? No, he gives you plus armor. What am I thinking of like if minus yeah, gives armor? Plus armor. Reality Rift, which is also a skill on the that's Chaos Knight, so that's on point. That's true. Very good that's analysis. Seven minus armor when you hit with that, and that is gonna. That's what actually allowed them to get the kill so quickly. They have an insane amount of burst damage on KBU, and any team fight that Arkosh takes needs to be really well presented beforehand. They can't just take these haphazard engagements in the triangle. Uh, that was also partially because of KBU's control, though, so well done by KBU. And Arkosh now going for a desperate smoke. Again, still smoking oh, into okay. Aegis. the third fight they picked. And well, it's a pickup for now. Can they leave in time? No, they're gonna, they're gonna power through. More. Move on forward. Remo, he bought back earlier, Radiant's so if he dies here, it'll be a dieback. Is he gonna blink on this? He's thinking about it. A vision of I Nihilate. Gremlo acting a bit like a spy. That's all that's gonna work. They secured some uh, space for Pale Horse, and he can go back to his triangle, which is still warded, by the way, because KBU just put a different ward here. A Pale Horse. <laughs> No, not aware of this. Someone please deward the bottom half of the triangle. Okay, BU was there for like half a year. At this point, you probably should assume there's some sort of vision there. You just lost the team fight there as well. Well, the map was another one. Sunlight and Salacious Sea Line setting up the mid lane. Uh, Sunlight also has his Ag Shard, which allows you to create an illusion uh, on Chaos Bolt as soon as it connects. Six seconds, and it is a strong illusion just like the rest of yours, so it's pretty good. Pretty good shard. Used to be uh, random. It used to be for however long Chaos oh. Bolt landed. Oh, they got it. Oh, they got the ward. Nice job, That's huge. Yeah, well done. I don't think it was him. It was, it was Monkey put this entry. Nice job, Monkey. Right. Gremlo just hit the ward. Pale Horse, because of this, now has a, lo a little bit more space. KBU can totally just go into the triangle, honestly, without vision and still win a fight. But it's definitely harder. And seeing as they're a more cautious oh, team, they might you. just play it a bit more defensively, giving a small chance for Pale Horse to recover into this game and have at least one good team fight. Look at Monkey. Look at him guarding Pale Horse's farm right now. While KBU <laughs> goes and says, I guess we'll just go high ground. Yeah, I mean, they. If nobody's gonna show up. They got up. creeps hitting Barracks mid lane and they see a PA farm in top, so they're just gonna go ahead and destroy your mid tier 3 tower. Uh, it, as if the siege was bad, uh, Annihilate uh, is not going to buff it with his Ag Shard being online. So we got a long duration GKB. His top lane is just completely yep. deleted. Pale Horse is still farming. <laughs> Don't worry! Someday! Slithering Crush has been used by the 4 second Chaos Bolt destroyed Scramblo. That is a dieback indeed. Monkey got silenced, couldn't do much. From behind, the Storm in the Isle jump in, trying to at least kill the Warden. One support, can they kill one support? They did it! The Mana Void though crushes them, and now Monkey Here's comes Pale in for nothing. BKB. Pale Horse activates BKB, 1v5ing them, Pale Horse. He knows, he has confidence, that's all that matters, Pale Horse! He's gonna lead this charge. Oh no, Pale Horse been caught. Pale Horse has been silenced. The poor man has to retreat, but Monkey allows this to happen because of his Cinder Brew. Pale Horse actually gets the Phantom Strike and gets away. He did nothing in that fight. Don't let my hype, you know, trick you. He, he absolutely had zero impact, but he did not die. He did not and die. And that's a win. And he, and he stopped farming, which uh, for, the, for the PA, you know, is, is a pretty big step up. It's, it's the coming of age story, right? Of a, of a true hard carry. Uh, and now that two of his <laughs> yes. lanes have been destroyed, he's going to try and channel his, uh, his internal, eternal envy. That's, uh, that was a little bit difficult. Oh. What's going on? Mike. Pro. Pale Horse going to protect him. The Illusion's going to deal wow. with Chrome. Pale Horse lacks the damage to kill a CK. The tips to Sunlight from his own team. This team is not toxic, unlike Arkosh. They only tip their teammates for good plays. Yep. Arkosh can't help it, of course. They are made of, you know, most humans are made of 75% water. Uh, they are made of 75% acid. That's top lane. Uh, Annihilate is trying to get through him. He's going to BKB, which, of course, doesn't allow him to DP away because Gremlin can still bash. Turtle's going to jump the back line. Realm pops him with a mana void, and Turtle BKBs to zip down to the low ground. Pale Horse is now here trying to fight versus Realm. A big crit is going to actually bolster him. He goes in further, completely alone, but he almost cleaves through the tiny. The dagger will pick up the kill. But he's also soul bound to Turtle. There's no mana void, however, but there is still sunlight, and sunlight will tear right through Turtle as Salacious Sea Lion's the one to get the kill on the Pale Horse. And Realm is going to continue this, hoping to go for Monkey. The last kill, they want to get that team wipe. Realm sees him now. Monkey 
has been found. Going back to the trees, his natural habitat, he'll be safe in there. Uh, no, I gotta admire Pale Horse's confidence. Hasn't really yielded any results yet, but the first step is believing yourself. What is it that Americans say? Fake it till you make it? Fake it till you'll make it. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, hey, uh, you know, a decent fight out from him. He does most of the damage in that engagement and uh, ends up at least picking up a kill onto the Tiny. Uh, just really trying to squeeze every single drop of utility out of his BKB. That's his A-second BKB there utilized. Not bad, um, but the issue is is that the AM is just so far ahead that he just he doesn't Radiant's care about the storm. In fact, attack. anytime he sees storm, he's just <laughs> like a homing missile. I mean, he's completely yep. negated any storm impact in this fight. It feels like this game. Yeah, I, I can't really blame Turtle for that. I actually thought he played a pretty decent game. Uh, but between the Soulbind and the Mana Void, like, what are you going to do, dude? Especially because he's the IO partner, so Soulbind is a guarantee for you, right? Yep. Like, he's always going to leash to the IO, almost always. And the Mana Void will almost always hit you and the IO on top of that. So it's not like they're even wasting it. At this point, Storm is just a walking bomb. So no matter how good Turtle is, he can't really avoid that. Even with his BKB, he's utilized all the important charges right now. He's down to seven seconds, not as big a deal. He's going for Lincolns. He's just trying to live. Roche is up though. Roche would like to live. We have a lot of heroes now hitting him. It's going to be an Aegis as well. Sorry, an Aegis and an Ag Shard. Uh, counter spell upgrade is decent. Spell damage reduction is kind of nice actually. Uh, but I doubt we're going to. Oh, no, never mind. He's going to take it. Uh, it also does something to counter spell, I believe, the active. Nope. Uh, yeah, it, it. Well, it makes it so that you reduce just a passive, yep. right? Yeah, that's it. Uh, so oh, you mean, oh, okay, right, no, the activity is the same. Yeah. But it does work in different ranges, so now when you're close to them, they will deal less spell damage. I don't think that's useful at all, this game. Not at all. You know. No, I mean, Storm has is, is had basically no impact. I, oh, that close radius is 300. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's basically like a pipe passive, right? Without having to buy a pipe. It's like a Mage Slayer, right? Yeah, but, but you, you still yeah. give your team, I believe, that 10% uh, damage reduction uh, as well. No, it's for the oh, enemy. Oh, it is for, for enemy. enemy. All that is for okay. the enemy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like an anti -pipe. Yeah, so it's like oh, a, what a, it's like what a, a mage slayer in area. La <laughs> okay, I, I've played enough games at USC to know that's not lag. <laughs> I I know this region now. It's kind of promising for Arkosh, though. If they can perhaps blow up this tiny, maybe even get rid of this DP early on in the fight, I do like their chances a lot better. Okay, go. I don't think so. I, I I hold no hope for them, to be honest. I think KDU... Oh, Sunlight is not the target, fight. though. He is far too tanky for care. Oh! Never mind. They actually blew up the warden pretty quickly. Tiny does have the ag, though. That matches the Io to death. Fail Horse and Turtle. They're trying to double team MR Taurus, but Fail Horse will lose that matchup. And they also send MR Taurus flying. No GG. mana. The GG gets called. And KBU will win game number one. Destroying Arkosh, obviously. Yep. Yeah, basically destroying Arkosh and our tourist asking Puppy uh, for the pause. Uh, and Bell Horse responding with a couple of voices. <laughs>